Quote of the day on InfoWars Nightly News comes from Brent Scowcroft, quoted in the Washington Post, May 1991. Quote, we believe we are creating the beginning of a new world order coming out of the collapse of the US-Soviet antagonisms. And isn't that ironic, given the fact that the drone program, which is now being used to spy on American citizens, was perfected over the last six years in Russia. Uh, they openly admit that their drone program is to be used to spy on street protests. And of course, the recent cybersecurity legislation in the United States is also modeled on Russia. So that new world order coming out of those uh, post-Soviet antagonisms uh, certainly uh, has its influence in Soviet-style command and control policies. So that's very apt. Uh, Brent Scowcroft, 1991 Washington Post quote. We're going to go to a break now, but coming up, Rob Dew interviews Dave Krieger from cloudedtitles.com. Stay tuned. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Big thanks to Paul Joseph Watson for taking over news duties tonight. Tomorrow, Alex will be on the show with Larry Pickney. He's the former Black Panther head who's been harassed by the government for actually being somebody who's out there doing positive things for humanity rather than sucking off of it like a parasite. Can't have that. Another group, we're, we're going to talk... A lot more about parasites today here. I've got uh, Dave Krieger sitting next to me. He's written the book Clouded Titles, which we carry at Infowars.com. We have it on sale. It retails for $49.95. We have it on sale, $10 off, $39.95. There it is right there. You can go to Infowarsshop.com or just go to Infowars.com and click on the shop link at the top to check that out. And why do we have Dave on? We just had him on last week, and this is a big deal. Uh, there's over 1.4 million homes in foreclosure right now. And there's a foreclosure map. That's just in 2008. And that's when everything just started heating up. Uh, take a look at Michigan and Wisconsin. And then you have California, Arizona. Now, this is today as of March 2012. A lot more homes going in foreclosure than were back in 2008 when we had the financial crisis. So we turn now to Dave Krieger and welcome him to the show. Dave, how's it going? Welcome, Rob. Thank you. All right. 
Thank, thanks Good for coming on. Again. Yeah, yeah. It's great to have you on. This is a, a big subject that a lot of people have been talking about. You were telling me earlier somebody contacted you from Australia. After As a matter of fact, show. You, your show has huge reach, and I was uh, totally blown away when I opened it up and I was getting questions about what's going on. And she says, well, I understand securitization. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain a little more? Does, does the chain of title work the same way in the States as it does, you know, in Australia as it does here? I said, you know, in, in theory, there's a lot of things in the book that make sense. But as far as, you know, equating this with the Commonwealth, this book was basically written for U.S. citizens right. or residents or whatever you want to call the little 14th Amendment. Our foreclosures go counterclockwise down the yeah. drain. Theirs go Exactly, the other way. Yeah. You know, it depends on if, if uh, you know, where the shark is on the Great Barrier Reef. But, right. uh, you know, they basically, uh, they do have securitization over there. Mm -hmm. And they do have, uh, you know, any time that there's a securitized note involved, there's a pooling and servicing agreement. And I talk about this heavily in the book. This is a real deep subject to get into, uh, you know, on the surface without, you know, holding a seminar, which right. we'll talk about. Sure. Uh, we're actually doing a chain of title assessment workshop in Chicago on August 18th and 19th. And uh, what we do is we actually teach people how to do chain of title assessments. This is kind of a fundamental thing for anybody like yourself, for example, mm -hmm. who's gone out and bought real estate. Right. And so the biggest phobia, and I actually got some people that were uh, watching the video that mm -hmm. uh, Alex and I did the other day, and they're emailing me asking me, you know, well, I'm getting ready to close on a piece of property. What should I do? Yeah, that's a big question because um, I've, I've closed on two pieces of property. It is a crazy process. They take you in a room, and they just throw paper at you to sign, and you really don't have time to read it. I read the first two documents, and I could, I could just feel them tapping their foot. As like, just hurry up and just go through the process. You need to sign these documents so we could pay the 15 people who are, who are in the feeding line. Oh, well, how, about, you, how about the one that's, uh, well, I have a closing in 15 minutes. I got another closing, so we oh, have to exactly. hurry up. Yeah, yeah. You know, they think, well, you just want the keys anyway, so here, just sign these documents and sign your life away. Right. And you have no idea what you're signing. And a majority of the people that, that actually buy this book, um, and, and it was written for them. I have a lot of people that actually write me, and they, they call this their Bible. Yeah. Uh, and literally, I, I have people that have tabbed it and highlighted it and, and taken it into different sections so they can you know, try to get their hand around and understand exactly what's going on, mm -hmm. because this is a massive subject. And you know, when you're talking about foreclosures or deeds or chain of title, um, and it, it depends on who I'm talking to. The conversation shifts in 15 different directions depending on the need because everybody's got different needs. Right. And most of the homeowners that are involved in this were sucker punched in 2003 when this whole fracas first started. Right. Uh, what ended up happening was that they uh, were told, well, you know, home ownership is where it's at in America. America is prosperous. America is great. Everybody needs to own a home. So here's what we want you to do. We're, we, the banks all of a sudden opened up the floodgates and made credit just available. They have first-time homebuyer programs, oh, all, everything. All There's all the kinds of programs. And program, there's yeah. the key word. <laughs> you know, what was going on behind the scenes, Rob, is they were taking and they had all these securities set up on Wall Street and trusts. We mm -hmm. call them SPVs for special purpose vehicle or SIV for special investment vehicle. Okay. And so what happens is, is they have all these notes in the pool and they're all there assigned and all the borrower has to do is go to closing and put their name on that deed of trust or mortgage. Wow. All of a sudden, the, you'll notice because MERS is involved and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that, MERS, M-E-R-S, yeah. is an acronym for Mortgage Electronic Registration Systems. This is a, a database, in essence, that was started because people say, well, where'd this MERS come from? MERS started from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the Mortgage Bankers Association, the American Land Title Association, and all the major banks, they all jumped in. Mm -hmm. MERS has now over 5,500 members. And, and who are the members in MERS? All the major banks and the servicers. There's okay. like 3,300 servicers, mm -hmm. which are the people that are actually taking the mortgage payments for your loan. Okay. So people starting out with Clouded Titles 101 first need to understand that what the mortgage bankers did was they set MERS up to do nothing but track the transfers on Wall Street okay. between all the sales that were going on. Mm -hmm. If you look on your deed of trust, and I mean, I, I tell people to do this, get out your, your, your specs, put them on, and look at your files. Get out the deed, get out the mortgage, look at what you got, look and see whether you see that little MIN number, that M-I-N, MERS identification number, see if you have that MIN number on your document, because it'll be right there next to the document title, where mm -hmm. it says mortgage or deed of trust on page one, it'll be there. That's like the social security number for the, of, for the of deed. Of securitization, because okay. the intent was to securitize the loan. Right. 
right out of the gate. Now, they never told the borrowers this. No, no. They, they, they're going to go out and make money on your mortgage. Exactly. And there's so many theories floating around right now. There, there's a theory where the um, what happened was is the lenders went in and they borrowed the money from the Fed mm -hmm. at a cheap interest rate. Of course, yeah. And so they, they, they have this money, and what they needed is the borrower's signature. To release the money. To release the money. Yeah. So the borrower signs, gives up their personal identifying information, their social, where they live, their job history, everything, right. whether it's fabricated or not, because we know that in 2003 through 2008, there were ninja loans, mm -hmm. which is no income, no job, no assets. There were liar loans that basically stated income. Just sure. put down whatever. Well, let's tell you what. We'll make something up and we'll dummy up your financials sure. to make it look like you right. can afford this half million dollar house. When in effect, you should have had a house that cost $50,000, not a half million. Right. You could only legally afford to pay this much. Well, back, back in those days, it appears unconscionable that they would do stuff like this. And so they, they basically sucker punched people at the closing table, mm -hmm. and they had them sign these documents. And here's this money that's coming out of the Fed, out of the Treasury. And so what's happening now is the investors that are coming in through Wall Street, and they're looking at these 424B5 prospectuses. Now, these prospectuses have all these documents inside of them, like the pooling and servicing agreement, which shows you all the terms and conditions for the trust. Right. So people, they have no idea this is going on behind the scenes. They have no idea that their own 401ks that they've been putting money into on their job right. are being, being used that, and yeah. pledged into these trusts, which have loans in them that are structured to fail. Of course. And so they're playing both ends of the coin with the banks as the middleman. And so once that investor money comes in, what does the bank do with it? Pays off the note. Mm -hmm. So the note is paid in full. The note you signed is paid in full. That's one of the theories that's floating around right now that attorneys are trying to get discovery on. And then they take the money you send in and use that as, as leverage to buy Exactly. Whatever. And a lot of it gets shaved off in what we call a yield spread premium. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's totally different than most investors understand and most brokerages understand. But, you know, long and short is, is they have an aggregate fund manager that has all this money coming in from all these investment pools. And so all that money gets spent. Now, when you are an investor and you're expecting getting a return, and we start looking at these documents in the chain of title where an assignment has been recorded, and when they record the assignment, it's dated years past the date the pooling and servicing agreement says it should be put in the pool. Mm -hmm. So if there's a cutoff date on the trust of September 30th, 2007, and the document, the assignment isn't recorded until 2012, well, they just missed the trust pool by five years. Wow. And it violates New York trust law. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the banks, they want to come into court, and they don't want that PSA getting introduced as evidence, right. because then the real truth will come out. Yeah. And see, judges are, are now starting to figure this out. They're starting to understand, because MERS's own CEO, as we commented on Alex's uh, program mm -hmm. uh, last week, uh, we, we commented the fact that, you know, when you split the deed from the note, the note's a nullity, according to Carpenter versus Longin, which is an 1872 Supreme Court case out of Colorado. You, you have to keep the note and the mortgage together. They just ruled on this in the Eaton versus Fannie Mae case in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. This just came out of the course and now wasn't made retroactive because that would have unleashed a firestorm of lawsuits. So what 